Hello, I'm Alison Hargreaves from guidesforbrides.co.uk and I'm really pleased that we've got Alison Cathcart from uh, Westminster Registration Services joining us today. So Alison is the business development manager there, so really understands all of the, the new regulations and everything to do with, uh, with, with marriage uh, registration. So welcome, Alison. Thank you, Alison. Nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. So we've had a lot of questions about these um, changes that came into place on Tuesday. Um, could you briefly explain um, what the changes are and what they mean to couples? Okay, so until Tuesday morning, I suppose I should, yeah, 4th of, what was it, the 4th of May? Um, couples were signing a register when they were married. So the big green book that most people were familiar with, um, it's couples uh, and their witnesses and the details recorded in the marriage register it just included the father's details of each of the parties to the marriage. As of the 4th of May, it's a new system which is called the marriage schedule system. So the book, the big green book has disappeared and we're now, um, it, we've now implemented the new system whereby couples now sign a marriage schedule document. So there's still the signing that takes place after the ceremony, but it, instead of a book, it's, a, it's a, an A4 piece of paper effectively. Um, and the main change to that is, is this, the shape of the marriage certificate, of, uh, which is now an A4 document. But it, the, the more significant change is the fact that um, couples can um, not just record their father's names, but also mother's names and step parent or other parents names. So, so what is the actual schedule? The schedule is a piece of paper which is generated on the national system, um, the registration system, um, after 29 days, 29 days after giving notice. So it is a document, it's a legal document, but it's a piece of paper that the couple then sign followed by their witnesses. So instead of a, a book, it, it is an electronically generated piece of paper. And how would a couple get hold of this schedule? Because presumably they need it for the wedding day, do they? They do. So if they're having a civil marriage, the registrar generates that document and they look after the paperwork. If they're having a religious ceremony, they need to collect the schedule from the registrar office where they've given notice and hand it over to their, um, their minister of religion uh, where they're getting married in advance of the day. Or it can be emailed. Uh, as long as there's time for it to be printed at the other end. So for a civil marriage, they come in and give notice in the in the normal way, more than 28 dis days before the wedding. And then this piece of paper just will arrive on the wedding day, presumably with the registrar. Absolutely. So it's the registrar, regardless of where they've given notice, it's the registrar in the district where the marriage is taking place that prints the schedule and takes it with them to the venue. Fantastic. And then, so for church weddings, so we were all led to believe that there were very little, uh, there was very, very little difference from the point of view of church weddings. That sounds like that's not actually the case. So presumably, couples now need to come and give notice um, in the registry office before they have a church wedding. Yes, for every denomination other than the Church of England. The Church of England is still does its own thing, whereby bands are called in the church and then um, they sign the schedule um, at the church. So it's not called a schedule when it's Church of England, it's called a marriage document, but the principle is the same. But for every other denomination, they give notice and then the schedule is issued 29 days later and they can either collect it from the register office um, before the wedding or it can be emailed to the, to the minister involved in readiness for them to print it off and have it ready for the signing. So for that, for Church of England, and that's presumably also Church of Wales, the minister presumably deals with all of the details for that schedule and speaks to the couple in advance about whose names are going to, to go on there. Fantastic. And we've had a few questions have um, come in this afternoon um, and, um, and last night about this. So Catherine was asking, do we still need witnesses? Has there been a change to that? Yes, you still need witnesses to sign that the, the fundamental law is exactly the same. So you still need two witnesses. Um, they call them credible witnesses. There's no actual age limit. But what that we, we how we interpret that is that they should be over 16 because that's the age you can legally get married with your parents consent. But you can witness a wedding from the age of 16 onwards. 
that makes sense. Um, and Bex has asked, I know that we can now add our mums or step parents to the certificate, which in, in her mind is amazing news. And I think we would all agree with that. Um, but does this extend to grandparents because they often fill the role of an absent parent? Unfortunately not. No, there's no provision for grandparents. It's purely parents or step parents. Okay, so so and that's presumably step parent legal step parents. So they do need to be married. Yeah, they need to have been married to the other part, the other partner. Okay, and a couple of questions about how it works on the day. So Melody was asking, what happens in that part of the ceremony? Um, so when the couple previously signed the register, nothing, or surely something needs to be signed. Absolutely. So yes, so it's the signing of the schedule instead of the signing of the register. So it's exactly the same in terms of the time it takes, etc. But it's just a document as opposed to a book. Now, and I seem to recall that one of the issues with um, photographers and videographers being able to record the signing of the actual register is that there's concern that it's got other people's data on there. So does this now mean that the signing of the register can actually be videoed live? Well, I should think so. I don't see any reason why not, because there are no other people's details in that document. It's purely relating to the parties getting married. Fantastic. I think that's really good news. Um, and Jane is asking, uh, do we still uh, get given anything on the day to take away with us to say we're married? That is unfortunately one of the big changes in that we cannot generate a certificate immediately because the next stage for the registrars is to take that schedule, which has been hand signed by the couple and witnesses, and enter the details onto the registration system, which is the electronic system. And it's only then that we can then print off certificates. So unfortunately, we cannot issue certificates on the same day. So, um, and the process after that, if they were to lose the certificate or they need additional copies, presumably if it's digital, this gets a little bit easier. Well, it's the same. I mean, with the register system, we again, we used to register it onto the online system and then generate certificates, any number of certificates. So they can be ordered later on from the local register office. Um, and what sort of time delay is there? And perhaps more importantly, Lauren's question is, um, uh, most hotels request to see your marriage certificate to confirm you're recently married if you're traveling on a honeymoon package discount. If we're not getting it on the day, is there anything else that will prove that we're married? Well, that's an interesting one. I believe that the Registrar General was going to issue some sort of formal letter that we could use to, to give couples to, to confirm the marriage, but I haven't seen that materialize yet. Um, some districts will perhaps offer a priority service where you can order the certificate and have it collected the next day, perhaps. But I wouldn't like to promise that because it will vary up and down the country in terms of what type of service people are offering. But we will offer a priority service here in Westminster, for example. So if somebody has paid for priority service, then we would hope to issue it certainly the next day. Fantastic. I think that's, that's very helpful. And hopefully, at least the photos will be there to, to prove it. And hopefully, um, it won't take long for hotels um, to catch up on the fact that there's a slightly different system. Well, indeed. And that's that's something I mean, we've written to our venues in Westminster to explain that registrars won't be arriving with a, a briefcase with a big green book, etc. And that certificates will not be issued on the day. So hopefully, they will pick up on that message. Um, and it, 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 like any change, it will take time to filter through, but it will soon become the norm. Mm. And from registrar's point of view, is this, is this good news from your point of view, from the point of view of ease on the day? Because that book, from what I understand, it was one of the reasons that there were concerns about outdoor marriages, that what if the book gets rained on? So, you know, this is quite a valuable book that you've been lumping around with you. Well, yes, I think there, I think certainly in here in Westminster, we, there was a certain element of sadness that the, that the book was suddenly, you know, no longer going to be used. I mean, the, the system had been in place since 1837. So we have a vault full of registers going back to then. But of course, the main change is the fact that you can add mother's names and so on. And I think the loss of the book, the historic side of things is quite sad in some respects, but obviously it's now a new system um, with a piece of paper instead. So progress. Progress, we like progress. Um, and Gemma has asked, um, what is recorded if her mother is deceased? Um, 
as before, uh, the, the registrar will ask that, those questions in advance of, of the ceremony. The, the registrar is required to interview the couple immediately beforehand and ascertain those details, make sure they are correct. And unfortunately, if either parent is deceased, the word deceased is written in brackets after the name. And what about occupation? Um, is the occupation of either or, or both parents recorded there? Yes, occupations. Again, uh, the father's occupation was always recorded before, including if he had retired um, at the time of the marriage, or in fact, even if, if the gentleman had, dis had was deceased, again, we would check if he had retired before he died. So it's no different in that respect. Okay. And um, Elle is asking, um, do I have to have my mother's name on my certificate? No, there is no requirement. Um, you can just have a line drawn if, if you don't wish to have those details recorded. It's not compulsory, but it's advisable um, for future purposes. It may, you know, people may ask questions as to why it's not recorded, etc. but it's, you are not compelled to have it. And can you only have um, one set of parents on there? Um, so situation where you have um, either um, a mother, a father, and a step parent as well, and you consider all I three of them to be your parents. Yes, you can, you can. You can have all. I think it's up to four, actually. Um, bear in mind, this is still quite new, so I think we've only had a handful. But yeah, and I haven't actually registered one yet. But uh, yeah, I believe it's up to four. And and presumably, I'm sure I don't even need to ask this. Um, parents who are both the same sex are just both recorded on there as as you would usually expect. Absolutely, yes. Superb. Um, and Hannah's asking, do we get the certificate um, and the schedule posted out or do we go and collect it? It's probably best to collect it if you're getting married in a religious building or you can arrange for it to be emailed to the minister to print him or herself. And what about the certificate after the wedding? Is that posted out? The certificate can only be issued once that schedule has been returned to the register office. So um, after the marriage has taken place, obviously, if it's a civil wedding and the registrar has brought it with them, they'll bring it back. But if it's a religious wedding, then you'll need to return that signed schedule back to the register office for it to be registered. And then the certificates are produced. And that must take place. I think it's within five days of the wedding. Um, and Hannah, you've, Hannah's asking, is it A4? Yes, we've already answered that. Yes, it is A4. And will our certificates have a scan of our signatures on? Uh, no, um, no, because it will be printed, it will be generated electronically um, from the paper document so once it's on the system. Excellent. Um, and uh, Emma is asking, uh, we did our marriage license six months ago and only gave our father's details. So can we have our mums on there now? Yes. So for those notices that were given before the changeover, the registrar um, with the schedule will only show the father's names, but the registrar will check the mother's name with the couple and then enter them onto the schedule at the time just before the wedding takes place. Fantastic. So this this is every new marriage, regardless of how notice was given originally. Um, that is um, that's superb. Um, and I am just seeing if there are any other questions that um, that have come in. Um, I think that is pretty well. Um, I think that is covering absolutely oh here we go will celebrants be able to complete this new paperwork on the day no <laughs> in a word <laughs> very blunt um it, ha it the, the celebrant um system as it were the celebrants don't perform legal ceremonies um unless they are a minister of religion which is a slightly different thing so no if, if it's a civil wedding it has to be done by a registrar Fantastic. And um, and just to confirm, the, because we've had a lot of talk over the last few months about changes to the marriage law and the possibility of weddings being able to take place outside and, and various different changes. Um, this is not related to that at all, is it? This isn't that they've sort of changed their mind about all of that. That All of those conversations are still going on. This is a completely different um, area they, they're looking at. 
Yeah, absolutely. This this has been on the cards for some time. It did take us all a little bit by surprise that they implemented it quite so soon. We thought we might have a few more months to get settled in after um, all our problems with COVID and so on. But no, this is completely separate to the Law Commission review and all of those potential changes. Well, I guess it does have some benefits because from the point of view of, you know, the number of books in circulation and so on, when we are expecting so many weddings. So which probably takes me on very, very nicely to um, I was very keen just to speak to you about the challenges we're hearing in some areas where um, the registrars are concerned about the huge volume of weddings that we're expecting with everything looking really, really positive for June the 21st onwards. And not surprisingly, a lot of couples that perhaps had even booked their weddings last year, but haven't got around to booking the registrars yet, or are starting to book now and going, come on, let's, let's get this wedding sorted. Um, are finding that either it's quite difficult to get through to the registrars, unable to get through on the, um, the phone, um, or um, when they do get through, are finding that they're, they're busy. So unable to get through to registrars. Is that because a lot of the offices are closed? Is, is there a, an, an issue there? Well, I think it's a number of issues. I mean, registrars don't just deal with weddings. Um, it's births, deaths, marriages and citizenship. And all when you lump all of that together um, and, and combine that with backlogs, and one thing or another, um, it, it has been become quite a challenging time for registrars because, I mean, just for example, we deal with citizenship ceremonies. So people who are becoming British have to go through a citizenship ceremony before they can get their naturalization certificate. And we have found that the Home Office, because they were closed over COVID, are now sending through certificates at a rate of knots. And we are inundated with people wanting to book a certificate, a uh, citizenship ceremony. Um, likewise, um, we've had lots of, dealings with couples who have been rescheduling their weddings we've been cancelling them rescheduling refunding all of that sort of thing and we've had the new marriage schedule system to implement um which doesn't sound very you know tricky but actually there's been a lot of work involved in that because we have had to deal with talk to clergy about them returning their registers to us um about trying to explain the new system trying to make sure that we've prepared for it so it's all come at once so i do feel sympathy for quite a number of districts that have suddenly found their workload has tripled, quadrupled. And of course, not only that, we're dealing with more inquiries because of all the weddings we couldn't do last year are now suddenly inquiring, as well as all the newly engaged couples that we would have been dealing with anyway. So it's it's a triple, quadruple whammy, if you like, um, and it's affecting us all. So, you know, I think I, I, we all completely understand the frustrations and we feel it ourselves, but um, yeah, it, it's been a, a roller coaster of a time, really, I would say. Yeah, and completely understandable that, yeah. that you know, they're, they're getting a little bit well. And presumably a lot of registrars are um, still working from home um, because if they're not needing to be in the office and, and therefore the phones perhaps aren't being manned quite as much. So possibly, I mean, possibly. I know that we've, we've, we have a combination of those who work at home and those who come in. Um, and actually a lot of us find we can get more done when we work at home, um, myself included, although I am in today just um, because it's one of the first days of the new system. Um, so I've been here just to lend a helping hand and, and also find out how it's going and what to do. Um, but yeah, it, I think it varies across the country. Um, you know, and in, in London, especially, I think it's been particularly busy, um, as it always is, you know, where, where I am in Westminster, we've got a huge range of range of venues, I think we have over 140. And we've got a very popular town hall venue as well, the old Maryland town hall. So it's it's constantly busy. Um, and as I said, with a, a double, at least a double the workload, I think than we would normally have had at this time of year. Yes, and I think I think a lot of couples don't um, don't appreciate that most registration services are running venues like, as you say, Old, old Marley going to Town Hall, and you've got you know eleven rooms that, that people could be getting married in. So you've got a lot of it's you're sort of running your own venues as well as um, as, as juggling everything else that's going on. And and I know from talking to you in the very first lockdown when couples were concerned that if they couldn't get through. Um, would they be able to give notice in time or would they be able to? And, and I know then that actually it did happen that, that part of the reason that those couples that perhaps are trying to book now for 2022 weddings or for weddings later on this year, the reason that they are struggling to get through is more or not getting an instant response 
is because you're prioritizing those that are needing to get notice and and absolutely so you know yeah we're we're prioritizing those who need to give notice because they're getting married more more you know sooner rather than those who are getting married in 2022 for example so it's it's a really tricky one and of course you have no idea of what your workload is going to be because you just don't know how many people out there are planning to to use your service it's it's hard to predict um you, you've got a general idea year on year but this is this these are very unusual circumstances because of last year just being a wipeout in many respects yeah yeah and the focus this week has very much been on venues in Essex Essex is the the busiest county we believe in in the country for um for weddings in uh, in approved premises and um and the the concern that at the moment it looks like they're unable to take bookings through through the summer months um but presumably that there are alternatives for the couples in Essex who are keen to get married um I mean, church weddings is one of them. My understanding is that registrars can deputise. Um, what, what are the what are the options? Well, um, yes. I mean, obviously, each each area has its own registrars. They are appointed by the local authority to to be those registrars. But there, there there is a potential for a sort of a sharing arrangement, if you like, whereby if that local authority, let's say Essex, agrees to let's say Westminster. Um, becoming our registrars becoming deputies for them, then by, by arrangement it is possible um, that other registrars could come in to another district and deputize for that district. But it has to be, you know, it has to be formalized, it has to be agreed, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, you can't just pick a registrar from anywhere um, and just swan in and do a wedding. It, it has to, it's a slightly more formal process than that, but it's possible. Yeah. And for those that are keen to go ahead, they're perhaps anxious whether they're going to be able to book a registrar. So I think in Essex, I know from speaking to the registrars there, they're fairly confident that they are going to be able to sort the problem. They've, they've recruited a lot of, of new uh, registrars who are being trained at the moment. So you, there's a lot of confidence that actually it will be fine when we get to June, July, August, when these weddings need to take place. And, and just to confirm, all of the weddings that were previously booked in, they're absolutely, you know, th there's not an issue with. It's people now wanting to book fairly last minute. Um, those couples that um, that are sort of taking the plunge and saying, right, okay, let's go for it. We'll book our venue and, and hope for the best from the point of view of the registrar. There is an alternative that they could marry elsewhere. They could actually, as long as they give notice, presumably 28 days in advance, you can marry anywhere and then just have either a single registrar from anywhere or um, a, an independent celebrant on the day. Yes, so basically, um... I th again, I think maybe people don't necessarily understand this, but there are actually two registrars at each wedding. And that's probably where the problem is for places like Essex, because they, they could do twice as many weddings if they only needed to send one. Um, so one registers the marriage and the other conducts the ceremony. But for example, um, if, if couples chose to have a, a, let's say, a basic civil ceremony, um, let's say in a register office or come to the old Melbourne Town Hall on a Monday morning, um, then we could send... The equivalent of a of a celebrant, if you like, but I registrar to carry out a non-legal follow-up ceremony afterwards. And therefore that way, you know, the, the pressure might be off because you've had the legal ceremony two or three days before, and then only one registrar would need to attend to perform a celebrant-based non-legal wedding a few days afterwards in that venue. So and that's because it's, a little... and because that's a non-legal wedding, that can contain absolutely anything. So they can, yes. it can, it can be exactly the same as their main ceremony, but it could include whatever else they're wanting. Other enhancements, absolutely. And in fact, you know, I think again, sometimes registrars do get a bit of a bad press that we we say no to a lot of things, and we are constrained by the law, and certain religious elements can't be included, but. There are elements that can and you know if, if in Westminster we do allow things like the warming of the rings and you know hands are um, fasting and that sort of thing so there are certain elements that we will allow COVID allowing obviously at, mo at the moment there are certain restrictions but um, you know we are op open to allow customization and personal vows and readings and all the rest of it so registrars you know they're not as stuffy and uh, as perhaps sometimes they are perceived is all I would like to say. <laughs> no. Just a little plug for registrars there. So. <laughs> no, I would, I would ab absolutely agree. Um, and um, so I think from the point of view of couples that are concerned about this summer, 
it should be sortable and they might need to go outside of their own district because if their own district is, is really backed up, they may need to go elsewhere for that, um, for that legal wedding, um, but they should be able to do it. And as we always say, your, your birth isn't registered on the day you're born, your death isn't registered on the day that you die. So there's no reason that your marriage needs to be registered Absolutely. on the day that you're married. Absolutely. And, you know, come to London, you know, destination weddings, the new destination place, come to London, Old Malibu Town Hall, there's another plug. So. Absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's a lovely venue and there's some really nice places to then go and have a nice Absolutely. outdoor COVID safe lunch afterwards. So. <laughs> um, yeah. That's been really, really helpful. Thank you so much for all of your help answering um, these questions. Oh. And if anyone has any other questions as ever, um, just pop them into the, um, into the chat and we will um, we'll check back with Alison and, um, and make sure we can answer all of those for you. Um, but for now, thank you very much indeed um, for joining us today.